My dearly beloved in Christ, about 20 years ago or so, I gave a sermon on the vestments that are used in Mass, and the sermon also included a demonstration. And I've had a request to repeat that sermon. I know many of you weren't here at that time. And so I will vest here in the sanctuary as I explain each of the vestments. Now, there are six vestments that the priest uses during Mass. There are other vestments, uh, such as a solemn high mass, a deacon and subdeacon wearing the dalmatican tunic. There is the cope, the long flowing robe that a priest wears for benediction, etc. But the vestments for mass are six. Now, I might just add, and I'll repeat it at the end, that I'm always amazed at the beauty of the liturgy and the wisdom of Holy Mother Church and how carefully everything is delineated for the worship of God. And I think that alone should be a proof to us that the Catholic Church is the true church. Apart from all other considerations, the fact that the liturgy is so carefully uh, arranged and delineated and so many rubrics and rules for the bows of the head, the folding of the hands, when to make the sign of the cross, how deeply to bow the head. You would be amazed if you knew all that priests must learn when they are seminarians and are preparing for ordination. So likewise, the vestments are designed and arranged according to very strict guidelines. Now, vestments for the priest, when he's offering the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, it is only logical that he would wear garments that have been especially blessed for that purpose. But this goes back even to the Old Testament. God revealed to Moses what vestments were to be made for the priests that would offer the sacrifices. Now in the early church, imagine after our Lord ascended into heaven, and during times of persecution, likely priests wore simply their own garments that they wore every day. But very soon, there developed specific garments that were required that were fitting for the priest. Now, the first one that is put on is called the amice. This is a rectangular piece of linen. The priest places it first on his head and then tucks it in around the neck. And it serves a practical purpose, and that is especially during the summertime when it's hot and the priest is sweating. It keeps the sweat from getting onto the vestments. But also it signifies mortification of the tongue as it's placed around the throat. And it reminds us of what St. Paul refers to when he says the helmet of salvation, to put on the helmet of salvation. So it signifies again mortification of the tongue. And uh, the priest puts it on by first of all kissing the cross that is on the, there are three of the vestments that the priest kisses when he puts them on. And again touches his head and then places it around his neck. So I'll read to you the prayer, the English translation of the prayer that I say in putting it on, and then I'll put on that particular vestment. I also might mention that when a priest is going to vest, the first thing he does is to wash his hands, and the prayer in washing the hands is, cleanse my hands, O Lord, washing out every stain that being pure from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, I have may, I may have grace to serve thee. So that's the washing of the hands. Now, putting on the amice, I will say in Latin the prayer, Set upon my head, O Lord, the helmet of salvation, that I may overcome the assaults of the devil. In pone Domine Capite Meo Gallium Salutis, ad expugnandos diabolicos in crucis. You notice also that the amice, in addition to being an oblong piece of linen, has these two long strands of cloth by which the priest secures it around his waist. The next vestment is called the alb, and the alb is a long white garment, linen garment, that covers the priest entirely, and because it is white, it signifies purity, and it signifies all the virtues with which a priest ought to be clothed interiorly. It also can remind us, and each of the vestments can remind us of an aspect of our Lord's passion. So remember when Herod put a white garment on our Lord and mocked him as a fool. Our Lord was treated as a fool in Herod's court, so it reminds us of that aspect of the passion. As the priest puts on the alb, he says the prayer, Make me white, 
O Lord, and cleanse my heart, that being made white in the blood of the Lamb, I may attain to joy everlasting. De alba me domine at munda cormeum, ut in sanguine agni de albatus, gaudis per furar sempiternus. The next garment is what looks like a long rope, what we call the cincture, which the priest places around his waist to secure, to hold the, the alb in place, and I will not completely tuck it in on the sides because later on it will be tucked in after I put on the stole to hold the stole in place. The cincture can remind us of the ropes which were tied around our Lord as he was dragged during his passion from one place to another. It signifies chastity and the prayer that I will say putting on the cincture, gird me about, O Lord, with the girdle of purity and quench within me the fire of lust that the virtue of continence and chastity may ever abide in me. The cincture can be white, always, and it also can be the color of the vestments of the day. Pray chinge me domine chingolo puritatis, et extingue in me, in limbis me sumorum in vidinis, ut mania in me virtus continentiae et castitatis. The next garment is called the maniple, and this is the first of the three garments, the last three garments, that are always the color of the mass of the day. That would be a topic for a different time, but again, the liturgy of Holy Mother Church is so beautiful, the different colors of vestments indicate different lessons in the spiritual life, and especially the theme of that particular season. So now we finish the season of the time after Epiphany, and we begin today the time of pre-Lent, which are these three Sundays with the long names in Latin that signify today's Septuagesima signifies 70 days. And it's not actually 70 days until Easter, but the church rounds it up to 70, it's nine weeks. And so we begin to look towards preparing for Lent and look forward towards Easter. But the maniple is placed on the left forearm. And because it's close to the hands, it's on the forearm, it signifies working, it signifies labor. And so the priest prays for the rewards of his labors. It also served a very practical function in the early church, especially where the priest wanted to have a handkerchief readily available to wipe sweat or tears from his face. And so that is how the maniple began, and again signifies our labors. It also could remind us of the ropes and, and other means by which the, the soldiers bound our Lord and bound his hands during his passion. And as I put on the manifold, the priest will say, May I be worthy, O Lord, so to bear the manifold of tears and sorrow that I may with joy receive the reward of my labors. This is one that has also the cross, so we kiss the cross. Meri ar Domine portari manipulum flatus et dolores et cum exaltatione precipiam mercedum laboris. When a bishop has mass, he puts on the maniple not before mass, but after he says the confidior at the prayers at the foot of the altar. The next vestment is called the stole. This is probably, we could say, the most important garment because the stole is used for administration of every sacrament. The priest puts on a stole as he administers that sacrament because it signifies priestly power and authority. Now a priest puts on the stole and crosses it on the breast, whereas the bishop has the stole hanging straight. And the reason why the priest crosses the stole for Mass when he puts it on is to signify that he does not have the fullness of the priesthood. He is barred, so to speak, from ordaining other priests, whereas a bishop who can confirm and ordain priests and even consecrate bishops, wears the stole straight, signifying that he has the fullness of the priesthood. Once again, this could remind us of the ropes that were tied around our Lord as he was dragged about during his passion. The prayer that is said, Restore to me, O Lord, the stole of immortality, which I lost through the transgressions of my first parents, that though I be unworthy to approach thy sacred mysteries, I may yet be counted meat for eternal joy. Rede miki domine stolum immortalitatis, quam perdidium prevaricatione, primi parentis, et quam vis indinius, sacedo a tuum sacrum mysterium, meriaritamen 
Gaudi and Sempi Chan. And finally, we have the chasuble. Now, the chasuble comes from the Latin word casula, which means a little house. And it was so named because the early chasubles were a very large, completely round garment, and they simply cut a hole in the middle to place it over the priest's head. Over time, the chasuble was shortened. It used to go well past the wrists, over the arms, and there would have to be, the priest would be rolling it up to his wrist so he could function, and the service would hold it back, like during the insensation and so forth. But as time went on, the, stole, the, the chasuble was shortened to allow for freedom of movement. And now we have two styles of the chasuble. The one I'm going to wear today is called a Gothic chasuble. And the Gothic is the, the kind of chasuble that goes over the arms, extends over the arms, and so more similar to the ancient chasubles that were worn, that were very full. But in the Middle Ages, the chasuble began to be cut back and back all the way to the shoulder, and that style of chasuble is called the Roman chasuble. Each one is permissible, either one may be used, and there are different advantages, you might say, to each one. A Roman chasuble tends to be more stiff and allows for more decoration on the back of the chasuble. Some of the Roman chasubles, beautiful, beautiful chasubles with pictures and and decoration. Whereas the Gothic chasuble, the beauty is more in the delicacy of the folds, the gracefulness of the folds. The Gothic chasuble allows a, for a little more movement because the Roman chasubles tend to be very stiff. And we notice that especially when we elevate the host in the chalice at the offertory. It tends to be a little bit uncomfortable or burdensome, a little stiff. And so the Gothic chasuble is preferred by many. So we use both. Both kinds are permitted. And the chasuble, because it goes over the other garments, signifies the virtue of charity, which is the greatest of the virtues. The chasuble would remind us of our Lord's robe that he wore, that was stripped from him when he was crucified. The prayer that is said as I put on the chasuble, O Lord, who has said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light, enable me so to bear it, that I may obtain thy grace. Domine quid existi yuga man suaveres, et honest man lebe, facud istu portare sit valiam, quod quod consequar tuam gratiam amen. So that concludes the vestments that are worn for Mass. And again, remember the beauty that the sacredness of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, and therefore how important it is that Holy Mother Church specify certain vestments that are used. But perhaps you did not know before that the priest says a prayer with each garment as he puts it on. There also is the, is the beretta that the priest wears on his head, which signifies priestly authority and dignity. So we wear that when we are vested and we process in the church, or when the priest is seated, like during a high mass. And this concludes the vestments. Another, on another occasion, perhaps, we will talk about the different colors and what they symbolize. But hopefully all of this and this instruction will help us to appreciate more the holy sacrifice of the Mass in which we renew in the Mass the passion and death of our Lord in an unbloody manner. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.